talk about the Fablemans. Oh, the Fablemans. <laughs> it is directed by Steven Spielberg. Isn't he just the best? Yes. He made Jaws. <laughs> he made E.T. E.T. for love. And what else did he make? No, <laughs> I forget. Anyway, the Fablemans is about uh, Steven Spielberg's life, growing up, and how he became Steven Spielberg. So it starts off with him uh, not wanting to go to the movies. Oh no. <laughs> What if Steven Spielberg had never been to the movies? What would the world be like then? Hmm. Anyway, his mom and dad are very nice people. And they're like, oh honey, you will love it. They're big people and there's the elephants and oh, it's so amazing. And he decides, okay, I will go see a movie. And of course he loves that. And I think the movie that he saw was The Great Escape. Is that what it was? Anyway, he becomes obsessed with trains. So his daddy gets him a train set and each day little Steven Spielberg gets another little piece of the train for eight days and Steven he's a little bit excited to crash them so he crashes them and his dad gets angry because his dad wants him to respect his toys that is good it is good to respect the things you have what else is it good to respect nature bears crosswalk sign my authority. <laughs> what else should we respect? His mummy, who is quite smart, but she's a little bit cuckoo kachu, you know what I mean? She's just a little. She decides that they are going to film the train and she will let Stephen. Uh, who, his name is Sammy in the movie, so it's not Stephen. Sammy. But we all know it's you, Steven. <laughs> she gets out her, his daddy's camera and they film the train and the train crashes and then they put the movie together and it is magnificent because he's Steven Spielberg. They're also happy and this begins the life of Steven Spielberg wanting to film things and he gets all his friends involved, he gets his sisters involved. Everybody is involved. Of course the cast was phenomenal. Oh my goodness, Michelle Williams. She did such a good job as a mother. And then we have the wonderful Bubalas. There were two Bubalas. I cannot remember their names right now, but they are phenomenal actresses that are in a lot of films. The girl who played the middle sister, she did a really good job. Oh my gosh. Cheese from Reservoir Dogs is in this film. If you have not seen, did I say that right? Reservation Dogs is a very good show. I watch it. Cheese, one of the characters in Reservation Dogs, the actor who plays him, he is in this film and he is wonderful. He does a fantastic job. Good job, baby. This film did pass the Bechdel test. Spoilers! If you don't want to know all the juicy secrets, you need to Go away like E.T. <laughs> okay. Does anybody actually have like a light up Jesus Christ on their wall like that? Like for real? Like if you do in your bedroom, um, maybe seek 
therapy, okay? My favorite scene is where uh, Steven is a teenager. Actually, all of the high school stuff was just so much fun. Of course, this film is an homage after an homage to his favorite directors and moments in his own career. He references a lot of his films. I feel like John Ford? Is that his name? Is that the director's name? Sean Ford seemed to be someone that he respected, but I could just be talking out of my ass. <laughs> anyway, unfortunately, he was picked on in high school because he was Jewish, and uh, the, pe the other people in the high school were not Jewish. And I think this is very cruel to be mean to people about their religion because who cares? Is your invisible sky daddy any more important than my invisible sky daddy? I don't think so. You can be a Christian, Steven Spielberg can be Jewish, and um, we can all get along. So he films this beautiful high school senior video and he makes one of the jokes that was very mean to him. I think their names were Chad and Logan. So there was like the evil jock who's just like, you're evil. And then there's like the semi-evil jock who, I'm not sure, like he was a little too wishy-washy. Like, I don't think he really cared that Steven Spielberg was Jewish, you know? I feel like he was just like, this is what my community does. And maybe he wasn't really thinking about it, which, I mean, it seems like people should think about their actions before they do the actions, you know? Like, hmm, I'm going to punch this guy in the face. Is that a good idea? No, no, it's never, violence is never the answer, okay? Like, why do you have to be mean to people? Why can't you just let people live their lives? Like, come on, you know? So Steven Spielberg, he makes this, uh, he shows the video to all the seniors and Logan, the semi-mean bully, he's like, why did you make me look so nice? And Steven Spielberg is like, well, I am a film director. I tell stories. We need a hero. And you were the best I could do. But he didn't say it like that. <laughs> the scene is really good. Like, it's my favorite scene. I might just go back and watch that scene again. It was so good. You know, he's in the hallway. Steven Spielberg is like all upset because he broke up with his girlfriend because uh, she doesn't want to go to LA with him. And can you imagine if Steven Spielberg actually like followed his girlfriend to wherever she was going, like Texas or whatever? What about the women that follow their boyfriends to college? What would their lives be like now if they'd actually followed their dreams? Hmm. I think the true message of this film is to follow your dreams. As long as they're happy dreams, you know? Don't go after your nightmares, baby. Don't create nightmares. I think everybody just wants to be happy and have a good time, right? Like, that's kind of how I live my life, you know? Till I ended up in prison. <sighs> you know what's really cool? Is when he was talking about punching the holes in the film to create the gunshots. That was a very cool idea. I mean, obviously, I enjoy films a little bit, right? So it was really cool to see that behind the scenes kind of stuff and how he did things. I think the weirdest things about the movie were the tornado. She was very supportive of his filmmaking and he would not be a filmmaker today without her. And what a gift, how nice that his parents 
are actually supportive of his dreams, you know? I mean, his dad was a little on the fence, but not everybody has supportive parents. Not everybody has a good, strong support system to help uh, encourage them, you know? We all need emotional and sometimes physical, financial support to be able to achieve our dreams, yes? We can, nobody, nobody does anything alone. No, we always, to do something magnificent, you need to do something with other people, yes? I wonder how Seth Rogen felt being replaced by a monkey halfway through the film. Like, what, what happened there? Was Seth Rogen just like, oh, I don't want to come to work anymore. Because I got out. Because I can lie, because I can lie. <laughs> probably not. It was probably in the script that says the Rogan was not going to be at the end. But what was the main conflict? I'm really not sure. I think it was just the struggle to become a filmmaker. Perhaps that is why I enjoyed the high school uh, part so much because there was actual conflict, there was a hero, there was a villain. His earlier days were not quite like that. The ending was a little bit strange. Steven Spielberg gets to meet his hero, who is David Lynch. <laughs> I mean, it was it was David Lynch. If you don't know who David Lynch is, you really need to go watch Twin Peaks right now. Just stop watching this and go watch Twin Peaks. A warning about David Lynch. Some of his stuff is a little gruesome, okay? It's a little dark. And David Lynch is absolutely phenomenal in this. But the message was the message was a little bit disturbing because why does filmmaking have to be so hard? Why is the film industry so scary, difficult with teeth and whatnot, you know? I think maybe if you just if you had more women around, maybe it wouldn't be such a cesspool of blah, you know? Who wants a cesspool of blah? What happened to his sisters when they got older? Did they just disappear? Like, they were in all his movies when he was a child. Why aren't they in his movies? Maybe they didn't want to be in his movies. I have a very special rating system. You either get the guillotine if I did not like your film, <laughs> or you get the cute little fluffy pink chip. <laughs> because, you know, it's not great, but it's not horrible. Or you get champagne. And champagne is reserved for amazing films that blow my socks off. And as much as I love my sweet baby Steven Spielberg, oh, sweet darling, this is a cute fluffy pink sheep. He's a legendary filmmaker, Steven Spielberg, yes? He has brought joy to so many audiences, but this film, as, as wonderful as it is to not see some weird alien movie from him, um, I really think we all are just kind of hoping that one day 80s Steven Spielberg will come back with some sort of magic family adventure. It was a very moving story and I do think that Steven Spielberg put everything into it. Feel free to tell me what you think in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, if you like what you see, hit the like button. If you think that I am the bee's knees, please subscribe, follow me. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Go away. Go. Go away. Go.